This is a first look at the new Gearbox GBX paddle. A pretty good paddle plus a $200 price tag plus a pretty nice sleeve equals some very mixed feelings about the new GBX from Gearbox. So this is actually a pretty nice sleeve. I normally don't care about the sleeves from the paddles as they are typically just coverings that go over the face and I don't normally use them, but this one has a little strap and a zipper pocket on the back to keep maybe a wallet or your phone, and I appreciate the extra utility. Thanks, Gearbox. Now, Gearbox, while they do offer some honeycomb offerings, they're really more well known for their solid carbon fiber paddles that are edgeless and known to be able to take a beating. Shoot, it could probably withstand a nuclear explosion. So I'm not gonna lie when I say I was pleasantly surprised now that they offer a raw carbon fiber face paddle that is more akin to the rest of the market today. Gearbox I think does a great job with the designs of their paddles and I kind of wish they did more with the new GBX to differentiate itself amongst the rest of the all black paddles out there but there is only so much you can do with the raw carbon fiber paddle faces. The design is sleek and modern though and I do like it compared to some of the others out there on the market. <laughs> I even like the way the paddle performs. It's actually at my preferred weight of 8.5 ounces. And I also trust Gearbox quality control more than I do probably any other brands out there. So how does it perform? Well, as good as you would expect compared to other raw carbon fiber face paddles out there. I think it's probably one of the better paddles that perform great straight out of the box, but it's not perfect by any means. It has a pretty decent spin potential. I'd say it's about average and it plays more like a solid control paddle, but the balance and the swing weight lends itself to being able to put away the ball if you get a chance for a good volley or overhead. Don't expect to be blasting winners or passing shots on the regular with this paddle though. I feel like it's a bit underpowered for its weight and balance, and although it's perfectly capable, I think it does much better as a paddle for someone who has a more control-orientated play style. I say that because it's a pretty stable paddle, and the extra weight gives you the confidence when you're blocking or doing counter punches. I think the weight and the heft helps with transitioning into the no volley zone as well, it's a very soft, absorbing kind of feeling paddle without feeling like too much like a pillow. Needless to say is that I actually like this paddle, but I think it's lacking in power, at least a little bit for me. And I don't know that I would choose to play with this paddle. Let me, let me take that back. I think I would choose to play with this paddle, but it's not very high on my list. And I definitely don't think I would choose to pay the $200 price tag for this paddle. The landscape and market for raw carbon fiber paddles has shifted recently with companies coming out with similar paddles that perform just as well, if not better, with more affordable prices. Think Vatic, Legacy, 6.0, shoot, even the Volair, SLK Halo, and Ronbus R116 perform pretty similarly, and although those last two paddles don't have quite the great build quality feel that I get from the GBX, they're also $70 to $80 cheaper. Now here's my like thinking and my question. If you got $200 to spend, right, on a new Gearbox paddle, like, like you're a fan of Gearbox, why wouldn't you spend that $200 on one of the OG CX-14s? Aside from the difference in weight and balance, I think the original CX-14 and the new GBX plays very similarly. The GBX and the original CX-14s are both control oriented paddles. They have good touch, good feel, but the CX-14s are probably better and more durable in the long run, and they get better spin than the new GBX, at least on harder and faster swings. I think the new GBX does have a little bit of an edge on spin if you're doing rolls or you're at the kitchen line and you don't have the option or the ability to swing as fast or as hard. Now, if you think the original CX-14s are lacking in power, you can always weight them up or you can dish out the extra 50 bucks and go with one of the new CX-14 Ultimates, which are a little bit heavier and have a little bit more power. So ultimately, the GBX gives me mixed feelings. I think it's a good performer and it's probably one of the better control paddles out there right now, but I wouldn't choose to buy the GBX at $200 when other offerings are available out on the market, even from Gearbox themselves. Anyways, this was just a first look at the new GBX. I did enjoy playing with it and I only had a short period of time with it. So if you wanna see a full review on the GBX, let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know in the comments below if you played with the new GBX and what you think about it compared to other raw carbon fiber offerings out there. If you're a diehard Gearbox fan, let me know if you think the Gearbox adding the GBX to the lineup was a good thing or not. Till next time, play better. I'm out.